Hello, greetings. You are watching Saiti Post English YouTube channel. And this is a channel where we exclusively talk about literature, both local and global. And this is Mahesh Paurel, your host, hosting a talk show today with an internationally acclaimed multilingual poet, Santosh Kumar Pokhral. Santosh Kumar Pokhral, to many of us, doesn't need any introduction. He has written extensively in so many languages, including Nepali, English, Russian, Hindi, Spanish, and there are many other languages which he will himself tell. A winner of Anton Jacob International Award, Class 1 from Russia, Nikolai Gogol International Award from Ukraine, the World Poet Award from Chekhov Autumn Russia, and the World's Golden Writer Award from 10 countries of the world, and the Best International Poet Award from China. So why I have seized this opportunity is because very shortly, within a few days from today, he is flying to Russia to attend an international poets meet. And this indeed is a part of, is a region of celebration and pleasure for all of us in Nepal who are trying very hard to see that our poets make their advent into the international literary arena. So Santo, sir, you are welcome to this Saitipos talk show on literature. Thank you, thank you. So thank how you have you been much. doing? I know poets are always passionate about their creation and about traveling and sharing these messages of peace and love. So what are you engaged in these days? Thank you for the question. So I'm very happy that I'm going to depart from this country for a few months at least, first to Russia. Ah. And uh, upon invitation of my very good friend, I would like to acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. So he's sponsoring me, mm -hmm. and he is a, he was my uh, roommate also during my study in Bosco. It was a long ago. We were studying engineering. Mm -hmm. I did my master's in engineering, civil engineering, hydropower from uh, the People's Friendship University of uh, then Soviet Union. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And uh, mm, so I'm very much opportunate to visit Russia. And his name is. Nasser Al Jamal, Nasser, I remember you from here. So, so he is a very qualified senior engineer, and he has uh, constructed a uh, lot of buildings in Leningrad, and he is from Lebanon, Lebanon. Ah, Lebanon. But uh, but uh, he became uh, the resident of uh, Russia because he loves that country. Because the thing is that the country which uh, uh, gave us something which gave us education, which gave us our livelihood at that time. So that is, that is still imparts uh, uh, some very good impression. Let me stop you here because you, you floated two very interesting things. Uh, this civil engineer nexus is something very important. I'll come to that little later. Yeah, but yeah. today when Russia is a disturbed country fighting vehemently with Ukraine. And at this point, only top seated politicians, military leaders, journalists, or uh, people engaged in peacekeeping forces, they visit a country, a war-torn country like Russia. How come a poet is taking this risk, visiting Russia, when Russia is in the news uh, for war that's taking place and you know, a lot of uncertainty and risks is there for any traveler traveling into Russia. So what, what metal is that which gives you the courage to visit Russia at this time? The thing is that both of your questions are interlinked now. They are. Yeah, both are focusing on the, the peace. Right? Exactly. The thing exactly. is that. And I am an ardent, ardent uh, peace fighter. So I have been writing on peace and uh, against the war several years, for the last several years. And many of the poems have been dedicated uh, to world peace in this book, also the war and other poems, and uh, translated in several, several languages of the world so far. The thing is that, uh, as far as the war is concerned between Russia and Ukraine, from the very beginning, it is started uh, to my memory, it is 24th of February, uh, yeah. then, mm -hmm. two or three years ago. Yeah. Then, before the start of the uh, war, I had written, uh, about uh, stopping any tension, mm. you see, mm. stop uh, the uh, uh, that uh, the war in the border, stop tension in the border. Yeah, that that uh, I think that one month before the war started. 
I dedicated to this event. But unfortunately, the war is still going on. Yes, and my concern as a peace fighter is that no people should die. No people. Because you see, the creation of a human being in this nature, it is the priceless contribution of the nature. Mm -hmm. You cannot kill the at the same moment. But then, but then, that killing is happening. That is a fact. Yeah, that, that is the fact. So how at, at what merit can poetry or literature at large stop this massacre, this madness of yeah, killing people? The thing is that I have written that uh, I called for peace. Jets didn't listen. Missiles didn't listen to me. Mm -hmm. You see, I have, I have stopped the war. The, the duty of the poet is to call the world for peace, to call the states to cease their war, because war is futile. It gives nothing except killing human beings and they're destroying countries' economy. You see? They are, they are. Yeah, con destroying civilization mm. that has been created for many, many thousands of years by human beings. And nobody has a right to destroy. But do you believe that uh, the, the war mongers, the creators of the world, the stats, the military leadership, they really listen to the poets? Do you still believe they listen to poets and writers and our cry for peace and all? You, the thing is that poets, lyricists, singers, musicians, these are the emotional entities created yeah. by the Mother Earth, you see, nature. Right. And right. their words should be listened to. That should be is an imperative, should but be do they, do they is my question, do they really no, listen? No. I think that somewhere inside their heart, there is some effect. When the poet cries, when the lyricist cries, when the singer cries out, you see, when the musician plays his music in a very melancholy way, you see, very sadistic, there is something, some effect is there, but we are not going to change the whole world by convincing the war mongers, because war mongers are war mongers, you see. Because there would not have been this world, should there not have been different people. Ironically, a country of Leo Tolstoy, a country of Anton Chekhov, a country yeah. of Nikolai Gogol, or Pushkin, yeah. Pushkin or Dostoevsky for that matter, or Dostoevsky, yeah. Sergei, this Sergei. country is is the subject of our discussion today. Don't you think this is a big irony here? Yeah. To a large extent, you're right. But uh, you see, Teen. I think I think Teen. that uh, I think that I'm going to Russia, then to Kazakhstan yeah. to attend the Asia uh, Festival 2024. 20, mm. This is the third literary festival mm. being organized in Kazakhstan. There, I will again raise my voice against war. Uh, Peace. Dear listeners, as far as I know, Santos Sumat Pokhran for the past 10 years or so, he is indeed a crusader of peace. He has an entire poem collection called The War and Other Poems, entirely dedicated to peacemaking, like denunciation of war. I was a part of the preparation of this book. Yeah, 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 yeah. And earlier modesty poems, which also pleads for modesty, yeah, see? Yeah, modesty. and other poems in 2023. Uh, um, and uh, Santos Pokhil Ka Kavita in Hindi and a collection being prepared in Nepali as well, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. including it's one that was already published in Nepali. Yeah. And many, many, many And poems. one is on the way. It's on the way, so good yeah. luck for that. And many poems translated into so many languages, including Hindi, uh, Bangla, if I'm not wrong, Bangla, Spanish, and Spanish, German, Chinese, Chinese, Japanese, so, Italian. Uh, what do you think you are doing, translating yourself into global languages? And what what is the capital that you are building out of this? No capital at this. Because Means, I mean, an emotional capital. Uh, the emotional capi capital I have been garnering. A lot uh, of emotional capital. What difference does it make, like an, a multilingual poet visiting the world? And what difference does it How do you feel visiting places as a multilingual international poet? Poets are such a creation, you see. Yeah. They are very compassionate. You see, they and are cosmopolitan. Yeah, they are cosmopolitan, yeah. The boundaries uh, does not very much affect us. So these nascent state boundaries are of no meaning to the poets. Do you subscribe but to politically, this idea? Politically, boundaries do meaning, 
you see. Mm. Mm. But emotionally, as far as the world brother is concerned, mm. world population, same human being, you see, with the same blood, you see, with the same emotions. So wherever you go in any country of the world, you will find the same people. Yeah. Only the language differ. The emotion is the yeah, same. Emotion is the same. The human element is the same. Yes, same. The compassion is the same. Yeah. So there is a certain stage uh, in the, you no, know, yes, it is like a transcendental stage mm. of emotive reality is that mm. you start feeling other people, you start uh, knowing other languages by their gesticulation. They don't have to speak. They speak, you understand. It's that, body, yeah, that is not body language. Yeah. Not only body language, there's a stage. When you get to that stage, you start um, understanding many languages. So these are the poets. The real poet, in the real sense of the word, are the, uh, you see, the creations of... The, you mean uh, doing poetry allows you to transcend these vagaries of divisions and you become a cosmopolitan human being. Do you want to say that? No, cosmopolitan. You see, it's a philosophy. Or let's say, com so let's say a universal, a compassionate human being. Good, Something good, like that. good, good. Uh, Cosmopolitan is merely, you see, uh, the trans- It's a more commercial type uh, of yeah, 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 yeah. terminal. So, so it was, it was, you see, uh, it was uh, propounded by the uh, uh, politician, bourgeois It's a utilitarian. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Utilitarian. So, so they don't uh, recognize any boundary. So uh, the world is for one for them. Uh, that is cosmopolitan. Anism. But we are emotionally trans, uh, you see, uh, uh, the, the, we have a trans border. Trans border human beings. Yeah, trans border human beings. <laughs> That's a good kindness. Yeah. Uh, to our viewers, uh, maybe when I see it, uh, Santos uh, writes about the war and its denunciation. Maybe you are interested to listen to one of his war poems. So if you would love to recite one poem. Uh, uh, with a random selection or so. Okay, uh, any, any one, poem, yeah, any, any poem. Sort one yeah. for our viewers, that will be a wonderful idea. So just a break, he is reading a poem for you. So please. So any, any. so there are martyred soldiers and the pastor, the heroes fell to the ground. The motives were different. The truths were different. The truth of one was the lie for the other. Mm. There was a loot of truth and falsehood. There was a truth to that. Yeah. There was a loot. This is oh. yeah. There was a loot of truth and falsehood. They didn't know what the fight was for. Mm. Who had fallen on the ground, losing their lives. Soldiers. The heroes fell to the ground. The motives were different. Mm -hmm. The truths were different. The truth of one was a lie for the other. There was a loot of truth and falsehood. They didn't know what the fight was for, who had fallen on the ground, losing their lives. Soldiers. The truth was too. The purpose was two. Mm. There were two reasons to die and to kill. Mm. So I have stopped believing in the truth from today. Both had fought a war of untruth. Both of them were killed. Mm. The truth was two. The purpose was two. There were two reasons to die and to kill. So I have stopped believing in the truth from today, both have fought a war of untruth. Both of them were killed. Mm. The pastor was thinking, the pastor was thinking, how can both go to heaven now? Ah. And he would turn the cross and pray for them a place in the heaven. Father, Please, no, thank you. Father, forgive them spirit. So, means the truth has been hijacked by difficult times. Yes. Or the truth of one who is fighting for his country. Try. And the truth the, of another who is fighting against his country. Try. Both are truth. So, they have their own polemics to suit no. their purposes. 
the That's truth is the truth is here subjective assessment yeah. is here so it differs from yeah. location to location yeah. so it comes and, to circumstances. yeah and the both are died both are killed for their truth sure. and from now on i am not going to trust in this truth anymore so truth is under erasure under question yeah yeah that's what you mean. Okay. Yeah, this is the postmodern ethos. So, um, uh, viewers, we are with poet Santos Kumar Prokhor, who is uh, who is flying to Russia to represent Asian Poets Conference. How come yeah. Asian Poets Con Conference is taking place in Russia? This is the Central Asian country, Kazakhstan. Oh. So it is bordering with China. Oh, so it's a very big country, right? Oh. So and very rich in their natural resources also. So they are hosting it. Yeah, yeah. And that used to be a very uh, potential part of the Soviet Union that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and contributing to its economy also as you can contribute. To Sir, I wish Asia. you a wonderful performance there in Russia and neighboring countries, including Kazakhstan, a safe flight and back home with wonderful memories, meeting poets from all, all over the world. Uh, I want to stop here and go back to your past. A civil engineer by training, somebody who spent decades maybe supervising roads, construction and designing things like that. A very technical mathematical issue and this poetry thing inside you. So how did this poetry, passion for it develop in you? Was it something that you inherited from your, uh, you know, family experiences or was it your later love? So how come a civil engineer is talking to my Morel on poetic terms? An engineer has a technical mind. He does. Yeah. And technical mind is a very sharp mind, you see. It is. Because, yeah. Because, uh, and they, they should be very honest to them. Because, and honesty is the first requirement of a poet. Very good. Very well yeah. said. Very, I, yeah. I endorse this idea. Yeah. 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 If you are not honest to yourself, you cannot be a poet in real. Or you cannot be honest to anybody else. Yeah. Either. Yeah. So the engineers are honest. First thing is that, yeah. and and that is the prerequisite of being a poet. Being quiet, I agree. Yeah. yeah, and emotionality is concerned. Mm -hmm. The compassion, uh, compassion is concerned. So these are other virtues which a poet should possess, and they are independent of disciplinary training and yeah, yeah, yeah. science or mathematics or all those yeah. subjective uh, compartmentalization. They say so. It's independent of that. We as human beings, we have compassion innately in us, right? Yeah, sure. but but when was your love for poetry means uh, start start that became visible to you? you see, when did you realize you were a poet? When I was thirteen. When I was thirteen. You see, I used to participate in poetry competition wow. competition in my hometown Lahan of Shira, Lahan, right? Okay, Lahan. And I used to you see garner prizes. You see, I, I used to stood second second that time I was second and it was. Uh, uh, on the birth anniversary of our uh, poet Bhanu Bhakta Acharya, okay. I, I do remember, uh. right? And uh, and the thing is that in my family, mm, uh, there there have been poets also. Oh. Yeah. So uh, one of uh, our this uh, elder uncle who used to be a poet, a very good poet, and he he did compile. You see this uh, our the the uh, the I. Or volume, a peak hmm. of our Pokhrel pedigree. So okay. Pedigree. Genealogy. Yeah, genealogy. Yeah. Hmm. So, and, and my, this, uh, uh, younger, uh, uh, this, okay, what, uh, engineer, he is, my younger uncle, hmm. he also used to write, he has uh, written several books in English, he has very good English, and uh, he has graduated from uh, Lebanon, uh, this uh, American University of Beirut. He's a mechanical engineer. Yeah, who who used to connect this uh, uh, trolley bus? He's the first engineer. Oh, this trolley and bus. this consultant has been named by him. Uh, of Trollgatagar. We pay our homage and tribute to this great personality. Yeah, he's old. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, he's 80 years old now. He's still alive. He's still alive. My yeah. respect. Thanks. Thanks to God. Yeah. Mm. So the thing is that uh, I had a passion of writing. And I write Borashas, you see, when I used to be in Moscow. I wrote in Russian, that time even. And we had a Druzhva paper, newspaper, hmm. uh, being published from our university, the People's Friendship University of Moscow. Uh, and that, that uh, newspaper used to publish my poems frequently. Hmm. And that's why my love to Russian language 
still is very, you say, alive, alive. And I do write in Russian. Directly, I don't translate. So you write directly. Directly. So into how many languages can you directly write without? In six languages, I can what directly write. What languages? May we know those but languages? This is matter, our mother tongue, Nepali, Nepali, of course. And English, English as I am talking you in. Oh. And the Hindi. Hindi. And I do have Hindi books here. And yeah. uh, incidentally, he is an MA in Hindi as well. If I yeah, 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 yeah. I, I have, I have just uh, completed my master's in Hindi literature. And a Hindi yeah. book in my hand. Yeah, yeah. Just this year, I published this book. Pahar or Sagar. Uh, tatha the mountain, the mountain and the ocean. And, and the ocean and other, other poems. Other poems, yeah. Right? So, and I write besides that in Russian, I told you, and in Haru and Maithili also. I have been promoting these uh, local dialects also to the international uh, platforms. Ah, so That's great. There is no day in my life when I have not wrote, uh, written anything. So I have thousands and thousands of poems. So I cannot live without writing. You see, that is my passion. I, I won't say that that's my passion. That's my bread. Your bread. Yeah, bread and bread. Bread and bread yeah. both. Yeah, yeah, both. So in short, that's your faith, let's say. That's your faith now. Yeah. That poetry is your faith. That's great. Uh, so because you see, this is the genre of expression, literary genre of expression, uh, in which you can uh, express many things in certain hmm. lines, in very few lines. Very strong. Strong. Yeah, tool of expression, poetry. Yes. So that put a break for a while. Let me come to your poetics, your inventory, your invention in poetic art. As a reader, when I go through your poems, I have noticed two or three very peculiar things. One is, you are very particular about uh, the diction, which sounds quite uncommon to the everyday diction of other poets and other people. As a critic, when I read you, you, you temper the traditional conventional grammar yeah. and you invent a new way of saying things. This is one point. Yeah. The other thing is, you do not compromise with the musicality. You yeah. you go very precisely with the rhymes, especially in rhymes. And there is a mid rhyme that gives your poem a musical quality. And the third thing is, of late, uh, you are promoting something called Pokhrelian Tencha. Yeah. So I put all three questions at one point. All together. Yeah. These are your poetic invents. So, could you explain these things to our viewers and to yeah. me as well? Yeah, my viewers, my readers uh, across the globe. So I'm addressing you all that you please listen to me. And I'm very thankful to the very particular question that uh, Professor Mahes Pauriel has uh, just uh, put it to me. The thing is that I have musicality in my poems because musicality is the heart of a poem. And rhyming, because you see, rhythm, there should be a rhythm. And it is not very much necessary that you should go for end rhyming always. But you should be very particular about the rhythm of the poem. Because a prose a piece, if you just uh, you make it uh, uh, like a tail of the kite, you see, mm. you just cut and make a very long Piece, that is not a poem so anymore. How, how would you justify, like most people are writing prose poems these days, do you mean that these pro, pro, prose poems are of no import, no meaning, or you mean to say that they also have some sort of internal musicality? No, yeah, that is the thing. That's what you mean? Yeah. Internal musicality should be there in every poem. Even in prose poems? Yeah, even in prose poems. Mm -hmm. Because of when the reader reads your poem, he shouldn't, shouldn't be stopped in mid of the poem. He should finish your poem. In a go. In, yeah, in, in a, a go. go. Yeah, yeah that, oh. that is the thing. And, and if there is some mid rhyming, that is brilliant. If there's in rhyming, it's a goal. I think that also gives a mileage when you read it out to the public, like in an oration, like reading poem. Yeah. Right? So it gives some impression to the audience. You say, oh, how? Oh. And they can oh. maybe, when it is metrical or rhyme, uh, your audience can remember, memorize your lines yeah, yeah. more comfortably than when yeah. uh, it's without any rhyme. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now this Pokhrelian thing. The Pokhrelian thing, you see, to the <laughs> world readers and the poets, I want to address you uh, with my 
new invention in the poetry world that I have invented two new structured poetry style genre. Mm. That was the first, um, you see, in the last line of every stanza, mm. the line was half of the foregoing line. Mm -hmm. and, and that line, that half, that line carried some imperative or informative or suggestive mood. Mm. Yeah? And that concluded, that was supposed to conclude yeah, mm. the whole foregoing lines of single stanza. Mm. That was the first in, in mention. And uh, uh, there were critical reviews on that also from American professor and from our professor of English mm. department of our Tribune University. Right. Yeah. And the second, and uh, I have invented Pokhralian stanza. By the way, this uh, word uh, was uh, just uh, given by English professor. Yeah, please write this, uh, give the name Rajan of the Was it Professor yeah. Rajan? Yeah, or no, 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 somebody no. from outside. Ah, yeah, yeah, I want to acknowledge him. Uh, he is a professor, uh, Ravindra Raja Shahi. Ravindra Raja Shahi, my brother, professor, uh, I thank you from here. Please listen to me. Yeah, but Pokhrali not is my, my given name to this structure. Yeah, Pokhrali. And, and Pokhrali stands he did so. So how does it work? So it is what you very nice to say. Pokhrali knots are this is peculiar. This Pokhrali stanza these are invented by me and being practiced from three lines oh. to twenty lines poems, right? Hmm. And these all lines are based on syllabic count. You count the syllables. Syllable, yeah. We count words, syllables. So. Yes, it's syllabic. Syllables, yeah. Oh. So it compels a poet to compose their poem in particular, under particular rule of syllabic count and gives a peculiar structure which is aesthetically beautiful also. You see, Pokhrelin stanza. If you start with monosyllabic word, you should finish the line, the stanza with the monosyllabic word. Can somebody start with a disyllabic word? Yeah, Can even try. Can start with trisyllabic yeah, words? But, yeah, but, but you have to conclude finish your, yeah. yeah, with a trisyllable or disyllable, mm. having the same end rhyming pattern. So is there a rule that uh, this poem should be of these many lines, uh, you don't have that particular like uh, line limit? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I start with three syllables, right? Yeah. Three and four, next line, four, yeah, five, yeah. six. Yeah. Okay, can I go to 60 syllable line as well? What yes. is the limit? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can, so it's yeah. infinite. The yeah. potential is infinite. Generally, I have managed it uh, up to 20 lines. 20 lines. That is called bhang tait. Bhang, bhang tait. Bhang, bhang, it is 20 in French. Because I do not, I do know French also. You part France, you see? Okay. Moi, I tell you, I tell you. Okay. Uh, France, uh, or Moscow. Uh, that's why. And there are three lines. Trinet. Five lines. Sunk it. Okay. Or paint it. Hmm. Eight lines. Poems. Octet. Eight. Ten lines. Poems. Stanza. Deset. Deset. Twelve lines. Geodeset. Okay. 14 lines, sonnet. Oh, you still yeah. have the name sonnet. Yeah, yeah. I borrowed it from Shakespeare, right? So oh, does, doesn't that create a confusion with yeah. traditional sonnet? And no, no. But, but, but we should be very much flexible to okay. borrow uh, from the... Why do you estimate? means borrow these French names if uh, you could have named it, it with English or no, any no. other language? No, there, no. There was difficulty, you see, okay. in managing this, uh, this uh, manipulating these titles for the specific stages. Okay. And I used it. For example, you see, uh, uh, the five, it is sunk. Okay. And nine, it is enough. Oh. And in a ten, ten, it is dis in French. Okay. So I wrote dissect. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Pokhrel, yeah, as far as I know you, you have been traveling off and on. So to how many countries have you visited as a poet? So how do you feel like representing this small but glorious country in international forums, speaking as a poet, reciting your poems, meeting great literary luminaries from all over the world. So what is the experience like and which other countries you have visited so far? Yeah, you're right. I was poet when I was a student. Oh. 
how to start from that point. Sure. Yeah. When I used to publish my poems in Russian, I used to publish my poems in Nepali also. So I want to take myself to that point. Mm -hmm. So when it used to be a huge socialist country, the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. I traveled. Uh, there were 15 states, right? About 10, 10 11 states. I Those components of the uh, USSR? Yeah, 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 about, yeah, right? yeah. Right. Union of Soviet Socialist yes, Re yes, Republic. Republic. Yeah. Ten, at least 10 or 11 you countries, yeah, I have traveled, right? Mm -hmm. It was thanks to the glorious uh, a culture of socialist government of that time. Mm -hmm. and, and our university, our great university, Udayan, we call it, uh, Narodha, University of Dhrujbi Narodha, mm -hmm. I traveled. Mm -hmm. And then, after graduating my engineering and coming here, mm -hmm. uh, so recently I have been traveling to India, to Bangladesh, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and once I went to Russia four years ago, and there was all, also a very small poet, poetic meet mm -hmm. among the Nepali poets, right? Okay. Yeah. Then to Russia, and uh, and it was after many years that we we had this 60th, uh, you see, uh, anniversary of our university. Okay. And it was organized in the heart of Kremlin Palace mm. that time, mm. and which is also coming in the coming February 25. The okay. 65th anniversary of so our university. You'll be going? Yeah, I will be attending. I'll be okay. attending in Moscow, in Kremlin. So what's the feeling like, like re traveling, not as a traveler or a journalist, or let's say an adventure tourist or something like that. You're traveling as a poet. Yeah, yeah. What, that, what, what is that experience like? I want to you know see, that. You see, you see, the thing is that uh, we, are, we are very hearty people, very hearty people, you see. Yeah. So very kind, uh, uh, vision towards the, uh, towards other people. And when two poet, poets meet, you see, they just hug, you see. I have a lot of friends uh, who make me calls, right? Mm -hmm. Santos, we love you, we hug you, <laughs> you see. So we meet with the people, we hug them, we exchange our views, we exchange our emotions. There is something I just, you see, do while we travel. So it is very important for me that there are poets in place where I am going to. So to, to give a continuity, you are going to Russia. I'm, uh, I'm interested to know more about this upcoming yeah. event in Russia. Who in fact invited you? Who is this person to you? What is the background of the person who is uh, inviting you all the way from Kathmandu to Moscow? Yes. And what is the type of relationship you have? Okay, the thing is that from my friend, uh, Nasser Al Jamal, mm -hmm. the great engineer Nasser. <laughs> I greet you from here. So he has invited me. Okay, I also yeah. acknowledge this invitation. Thank you, yeah. Nasser, for doing. And then, and then I will be there, right? And I will meet poets from Russia there. Okay. And I will go to Saint Petersburg, mm -hmm. right? And of course, I will be in Moscow. There are many poets from my friend circle. Mm -hmm. I will meet with them. Mm -hmm. Maybe they will organize some gathering. Mm -hmm. for me because I am their international friend, right? Right. So, and, and then after then in August, mm -hmm. this Asian uh, Festival 2024 is being held. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, in the row, this is third. Right. The first, the second, and the third. In second, there were representative poets from 60 countries of the world. Mm -hmm. And and the speciality of this uh, festival is that the Male Narod, they say. Male Nationalist, they say. This is the minority ethnicities who have their own language. Okay. Yeah. And they speak in that language and they have some literature. Okay. Here. So they are also participating okay. in this oh, yes, in literary 2024. And the organizing president is Bahit Rustemab. Bahit Rustemab. Ah, my greetings to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Our behalf. So he is uh, the president of uh, 
this uh, international uh, yeah this uh, ceremony 2024 so he is an international publicist who represents uh, Kazakhstan I have a suggestion please try to see that if they and we here in Nepal can have some collaborative work and venture like we translate their English works into Nepali and publish here and we take care of the cost and publication and distribution here. And if they can do something similar from our part, we can contribute our poems to them and they can translate into their local language and it's a publish great, that and then yeah, so we can breeze like Yeah, it's a great it's a great it's a, proposal. This is I, a proposal. It's a great proposal. Please post these. Yeah, post yeah. these and of course definitely. But the thing is that you, you see as you see me. So I don't go uh, to the groups here. I have like an isolated uh, right. I, I will personally take care of that. Yeah. And I will fulfill that leg that you have. I will compliment that leg because I, I am a group person is oh, you are yeah, an isolated yeah. person. Yeah, you say. Yeah, yeah. So uh, finally we are coming to the end of. And then uh, one uh, thing I would like, like to add. Yes. So I have been translating always you see. Right. I have translated the poets from Kazakhstan into mm. English mm. and I have published them. Mm. Even the Bakhid Rustembab, I have also published him, mm. right? So, uh, and I have uh, published uh, several Russian poets. Good. Their poems I have translated great. into English. That's indeed, great. I have translated Pushkin. I have translated poems of Sergei Esenin, right? Same. Yeah, very great poets of Russia. And uh, and these contemporary poets also. Okay. There, uh, there is uh, Ruslan Pivovarov, there is uh, Alexei Kalakutin, there is uh, Bhadim Tereukhin. Sheikh Yas Paminayu Drujiya Mai is Rasi, Alexei Kalakutin, and Vladimir Terukhin, and many, many, and Lyudmila Kulikava, yes, she has translated my many poems into Russian. Great, great. Yeah, and Nino Sabanadzi Yatiba Tojas Paminayu. Ladna. That's great. So you, yeah, and I, I speak you and I are made of similar metals because I remember myself translating Chekhov's pleas into Nepali mm -hmm. and uh, in a couple of pleas like um, Nikolai Gogol's uh, Inspector General, I was the lead actor. Oh, I oh, acted Inspector oh, General you of took Nikolai a, Gogol. Oh, oh, good, and, good. Um, I was the lead actor. I used to be... So, a, a, so, you were, so you were an actor in the drama? I were an actor in the past. Today also I'm associated with theatre, but I do translation works. I have translated Pushkin's plays, yeah. but from English sources, not from yeah. the Russian sources. By uh, the way, mm. uh, I beg your pardon, I, I forgot one name. Mm. So whose uh, creation I have translated into English, mm. his tales, and published in Amazon. Okay. In yeah, one book. Yeah, I have free seen of, your book. Free of cost. I, yeah. I don't charge any money That's from great. anybody in this world. This is, this so far, great. I have never charged a single rupee or kopeik or dollar. I serve literature free of cost. So you are a literary the, ascetic, may I call see, it a literary ascetic. and he ascetic. is Eldar Ahadov from Krasnodar. He is by this birth. Is and Azerbaijani, oh. he's a voracious writer and a poet, and he is very dear to me. He appreciates to Tibya Eldar. Finally, uh, before winding up this wonderful talk, so uh, I'd like to raise an issue. Like we are living at a time when the world is vicious by petty politics, power politics, division. Like in our own country, uh, a French newspaper very recently said Nepal tops the world in political instability. Every like six months or so, we have a new government, a new prime minister taking up. Means we are yet to consolidate our democracy and politics is playing this play. And across the world, as we see as a newspaper reader or a journalist, politics is playing good or bad, I don't know, but a great role in spoiling international peace. So at such juncture, what do you think should the poet's role be or how as a poet are you causing these political developments, both in Nepal and across the world? Your question is hardly approved from my heart. Mm. This is the particular question which is very prevalent here, you see. It is pertinent. Pertinent, right. you see. The thing is that politics in these countries if you say about Nepal, so not only politically instable in the first ranking of the world, mm. but it is one of the biggest corrupted country in the world who 
just occupied this year as per report of the Transparency International, right. it took the first place in corruption, where the Prime Minister was blamed the most corrupted Prime Minister of the world. So this is our fate. These politicians, not only politicians, but high bureaucrats also, they are very corrupt. And even the judges, you see, the judges are very much corrupt. So the big corruption is in the judiciary, in the executive, like prime minister and ministers, and in bureaucracy. The thing is that, only I see that the, uh, the parliament is okay, but these parliamentarians are also corrupted. You see, the government just allocates some fund to the province governments, you see, 40% of the fund, they digest. You cannot, you cannot control. So everywhere corruption. So if you ask me as a poet, what should be done to correct this scenario? So we cannot correct the political scenario as a poet, but we can raise our very truthful voices, you see, to just uplift the people, to raise the people against this corruption because no leader or bureaucrats has a right to benefit from the riches of the country only for themselves. This is the asset of the people also. They are not allowed to deprive their people of the riches of the country. What has been doing here? So these are the culprits. These leaders, if you ask me, is all corrupted. Every party is corrupt. If some party comes to the government, you see, he just starts some investigating corruption made by the other parties when they was into the government. And then he just, you see, comes to power by cross uh, these pros and cons, by certain means, by muscles and money. And then he suppresses. And when their interests are made, you see, they all are silent. So this is the pity of the country. These leaders have to be sent to jail. As a poet, peace activist, I'm against any, you see, a killings. I won't say they should be killed. Mm -hmm. But they should be peacefully, they should first conscientiously, they should surrender. They should confess their corruption and crime against the country by themselves. Tell them to confess, confess your corruption, confess your guilt, confess your crime. If they can confess, and they can just just take a give, just you see, bring their bag to the country to distribute to the uh, poor people of the country, make several flats for the poor people. You see, buy you see hectares and hectares of. Uh, land uh, to the for the pure pure uh, these poor people, let the communists manage their their commune. Let them be the leader of the commune. But let them distribute that asset to the poor people of the country. That will be their communism. But these communists who come to power, they are the most corrupt people. You see, and they have degraded the value of communistic idea. Now I, I can remember the Marx, you see, who lost his daughter for the lack, lack of money. Yeah. He was, he has no money. Jenny Marx. Uh, if, um, and then, and then I say. So if they don't confess their guilt, they should be just by legal means. By legal means, they should be sent to jail, and they should be, you see, put in certain cages with their names there and their charges of corruptions and crimes, and let the people visit them and give them bread like animals. So these leaders have this status in our vision. So if somebody asks me to be a minister of this country, I will never ask. No, no, no. This hatred to the politicians, uh, uh, you see. I got your point. Uh, the, the viewers, I should 
uh, at this point uh, pronounce a disclaimer that I, the moderator of this uh, show and Saiti Post, the organization I own, uh, we we stay aloof from the political comments of my yeah, guests. Yeah, these yeah. are his personal opinions. Yeah, and I and definitely as a point. We are we are not answerable to whatever he has said. So I I welcome uh, as a part of the freedom of speech. You have said yourself very clearly, yeah, yeah. but I do salute your courage. Yeah. So uh, poet Santos, I let me borrow some lines from Rabindranath Tagore, who said, uh, uh, "Where the mind is without fear." and the head is held high, yeah. where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments yeah. by narrow domestic wall, yeah. where words come out from the depth of truth, yeah. where the world has not been broken into narrow domestic walls, yeah. where, where the words come out from the depth of truth, where the tireless striving stretches its arm toward perfection into that heaven of freedom. My father, let my world awake. This is that's the representative he, prayer of yeah. we all poets of the world. I thank you very much for sparing time to talk to me and share your ideas with our audience this this day. And I wish you a wonderful trip to Rasa and to neighboring countries. And, and, then, and then to Cuba. And to, to, Cuba to Cuba. That follows after your trip yeah. to Rasa. So have a great uh, adventurous travel and bring home some wonderful memories. Uh, so last minute, if you have anything left to share with our readers. Yeah, I, yeah. Our, I have a shout, I have a shout for my readers and poets throughout uh, the globe, across the globe who love me, who read my creations. So I reiterate, and I'm very persistently that uh, poets should be very truthful. See, whatever they think and whatever comes from within their soul, you see, they should speak it out. Yes, they should speak it out for the good of the people, people, for the majority of people, for the good of the world peace, for love, for beauty, for compassion. So this is the thing, these are the themes which a poet in a real should dedicate himself to. Thank you very much. Thank Actually, you what very is, much. What is, what is the greeting word uh, in Russia? Oh, in Russian, greeting word is, you see, Zdrastuvice. 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 Dobre utra. Dobre utra. And spasiba. It is thank you. Thank you. Spasiba. Thank you. So, so viewers, uh, at this point, I went up this wonderful uh, talk show. After an interval of some time, I'll be back to you with some other guests. Uh, uh, stay tuned and follow and like. Uh, Inside the Post YouTube channel and subscribe to this channel, which is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, SaitPost.com, for giving this me, me this opportunity to express my views, and thank you, Professor Mahesh Pauryal, for this generosity you have shown me. You. Of course, upon my request yesterday, I had made you a call about this before departing my departing from Nepal to Russia. And thank you all of my friends. Thank you, Nasser. Thanks. Thank you.